happy that like it's just not me and Doug hanging out here. Doug's a nice guy, but glad you guys came. So I don't have the normal handouts that we've done. I don't know if you guys noticed the last email that we got from the board. They were warning us of a couple of things, talking about how when you put the for sale by owners in, um, you're supposed to put them in the date that's effective that it hit the market, not like necessarily the date that you wrote the offer. There's just so much shenanigans going around data manipulation so that people can say that they're producing this or doing that or whatever it is. So that's what's underlying this whole thing. So they really want, if you're going to put the sale by owner in, to say, like, if you write an offer on it, it hit the market on October 1st, we wrote an offer at such and such date, it didn't happen like that very first day, right? So the second part of that email, I don't know if you guys saw, was that something is happening with people that are putting significantly over list price is what they're getting on the on the um, offers. And she said, if you don't have, that, that can happen, right? You all know it happens, and it can happen. But if you don't put a note in there and explain why that's happening, that's not a valid comp, you can be excluded. Well, when I ran our stats, like we are as good or better on um, days on market as we've ever been, or list price to sales price, sorry, list price to sales price. The average right now in the MLS is 111%. So I'm verifying that number because we're either going to take it off of our monthly stats because we, ours is a 97 something like it always is, yet MLS wide is 111.35%. Yeah, so I'm not publishing that until we figure out what's going on with that data. Because something's crazy. Why? How all of a sudden is everybody else selling 111? Okay, so when you have a million sales price, yeah, yeah. Could be, yeah. And so she's looking at the board. She's looking at that. So that's why you don't have those stats. That's just because I'm in panic because it's the middle of November already. How does that happen? No. Auction <laughs> board. But you know what, we're not allowed, I don't think, supposed to do the auctions in there for that. They have to, our MLS requires that you put a list price in for an auction and a, and a reasonable list price. You can't just put in a dollar. So our MLS has rules against that. In Chicago, the list they started, they put in an MLS list and they drove them off. Does it? Well, that, and that could be it. Maybe they start putting some auctions in there and they've got to work the kinks out of that. But, so I, that's why you don't have your stats. That's a little crazy. So the other thing that's exciting, we have Mike McNeil with us. From what's the name of your company? I'm sorry. It's McNeil it's Computers. McNeil Computers. Uh, he's he's Neil's friend. Don't hold it against him. But Mike uh, Mike helps us out when we have various technology issues. And one of the things that we've been wanting to do for a long time is we have a little video camera over here that he has set up, and he's going to show Rachel and I after this how to load it to our YouTube channel. So that for our agents that can't make the meetings, or because it was so riveting, you want to watch it again, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you can check it out on YouTube. Okay. Never know. Okay. Um, so then I just want to update you guys on our stats. We have already sold year to day more than we did all of last year. So that doesn't mean you can quit. You got to keep going. But we um, are past what we did in 2015. And not only are we past that, but we are up. Our average sales price is up 8.9%. Our average commission per transaction is up 8.7%. Our average commission per side, I'm sure you guys are very happy about, is up over 16%. And we are up 20% year to date. So super great numbers. Good job, everybody. Hopefully somebody's doing the challenge. This is week number two of the challenge. Mike's looking at me like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and then October was phenomenal. We uh, had $623,000 in uh, commission that you guys brought in, which was um, 20% over last year is $520,000 in gross commission. So October was a great month for this year. So good job, got it. So what's the total sales volume year to date? Uh, 200, well not year to date, just through the end of October is all I did. But you, um, 221 million, 269,000. We've never when we wanted to be over 200 million. And I was like, yay, here we are. Two months left in the year and we're over. So, very exciting. So the reason I brought Doug in here is that home warranties are just, you know, it's we're busy. There's just so many things to grasp. I don't know about you guys, but I read an article on this and an article on that. There's just so much information coming at you regularly. And then when you go sit down and articulate to your client why they should get a home warranty or what it covers, that or then when that claim comes in, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't always have those answers. 
is always good to get educated on why we should sell home warranty, what they cover, and then of course some of the differences with Global Home and the other warranty companies. So feel free to uh, ask because Doug's the president of Global Home Warranty and he knows uh, all that information. His sister Erin Rarig, is anybody ever dealt with Erin? She is phenomenal. She's our claims rep. Uh, she's not just a salesperson. She really understands the system. Uh, she uh, works on our behalf and she knows how important it is that we've, we've represented this home warranty to the client and you know she's a really great advocate for us and, and handles it very professionally I, I believe every time that I've ever had with a client. Um, and Doug can talk a little bit more about it. One of the reasons that we only stock global home warranty here, which you guys are free to sell anything that you want to sell, we, we don't restrict that. But one of the reasons that we do that is there's a goodwill package portion of of the, that every time that it's sold, that we kind of accumulate in an account, and when it's really sticky and we're, we've got an irate client that this is, you know, going to be a big problem for the company, we can resource on some of those funds and get some things covered that we normally would not get covered. Um, and then just the fact that Erin just does such a great job of taking care of our clients too. So with that, I'm passing off to Doug. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I don't know if I, I was here four years ago, maybe, three, four years ago. So thanks for having me back. Um, oh, I had to go ahead and that also. Um, we do you know Aaron, which I always do. One thing I know about her is she's got a big heart. Aaron, Aaron was there with me all the time. She's always taking your side me. So, <laughs>
pools as an option too. Um, and I'll tell you a little more detail on the salt water pools. That's basically the three plans there. Kind of let you know statistically. Um, under the elite, you guys, 73 elites. 192 platinums, and this goes back when before elite, 232 golds. I'll tell you a statistic on elite, nationally and for your account, okay? 93% of the premium being collected would be paid out the claims on the elite. That's huge. All right. Only when it comes to how you say business, 93% of the premium would be out the claims. I'll tell you why we're paying 93% on that. The golds are running at 60%, the platinum at 86%. 76 percent as a company as a whole. All right. We pay more out of claims than other companies. And that's just statistically fact. All right. We put more of our money into reserves than we put it out of the claims. And I'll tell you one fact for that. That's why my agents such as Aaron get about a third of what any other warranty rep does. All right. We never did this company for a warranty rep. We told people what we do in this firm, what I call them a milk and person. I don't pay them a lot of money for the bonus rep. My agents are about one third of the money that the company does. Trust me, I hear all the time from my agents. Oh, we can make one third of the money that the company Well, we put that in the reserve, we put that in the plane to take care of the customer, we spend more money on claims. Statistically proven, I get every claims loss of every morning company out there. We pay more out than anybody out there. All right? And I think I have to start with that. Part of that reason is, and some of you have, like, raise your hand. How many of you have a good will done where it got long and denied real return to improvement? All right? We do that quite commonly, all right? It's a relationship between yours and our company. And, and there's always gray area in the market, right? and we can always be gray area. We're always going to usually side of you in the home market. And I think that's part of that relationship why you keep using our warning versus somebody else's. Now, let's talk about the claim process. I don't want to call it a claim when another warning company gets turned down. It's another warning company. Not that you would sell anybody else's warranty, but let's say for this instance you did. And that claim got turned out, where do you go from there? Go to your warranty rep in that area. Is that warranty rep can then make that call right on the spot and we'll take care of this customer? I'm going to call this customer. I'm going to hire this thing out and make me happy and I'm going to make a call right on the spot. I'm not the only company that they have the authority to do that. Aaron has complete authority to do that. Sometimes I've said, hey, <laughs> you shouldn't approve this one. It's really out in left field. <laughs> I think part of that claim situation that makes us different is when a claim occurs on another warning company, you talk to your rep, they send over to the claims office, you go to the supervisor, and they have a review board, and you might know next week what they're going to do. Tell your homeowner here that if their refrigerator is not working or all the ice cream is melting, we'll get an answer back to you next week to see if you're going to get any paid on this refrigerator. Not a very good conversation. We need to make that call within minutes. And when we get involved, we make that call and make the problem go away really very quickly. So we don't have to go through that whole process. All right. On the end, say I, I want them to having that authority. Okay. Um, how many of you are familiar with home inspection service option? All right. Makes it a little unique on our plan here. All right. I'll tell you the big difference there. We made that standard on the lead. It's an option under gold and platinum. All right. Probably the number one reason why our loss ratio is most high on the lead standard. All right. The biggest item that drives claims is. If you have a home inspection, the home inspector passes you, we do not turn it down for pre-existing conditions. The only company that does that. Right? Now, I'll tell you, let me read to you what the other, how the other companies read. The other company will say, if it's, that's right here, it's on that handout. The other company will say, we don't determine pre-existing conditions. We do a simple mechanical test, you have a visual inspection, and that will determine that is not pre existing. All right. Now, a couple questions. Who did, the visual, who did the visual test? What did the simple mechanical test? And who did that? And where did they get the results for that? You know, and they say, the bottom line is it sounds good, but it turns out for pre existing. It's really that simple. All right. So let's take the facts. You like to think home inspectors don't miss things when they inspect all of right? So you, you recommend this home inspector to come out and spend the house. He passes it. You recommend this warranty, I recommend you not take the pre-existing conditions. 
they saw a warning. They move into the house and blow in hot air. First time they turn on that air conditioner, it's five days more in the house. Warning company turns it back. They probably didn't say anything. They said it was fine. I bought this warranty and told them. They said it covered pretty good condition. But even if you told them, I got a $35,000 air conditioner that I paid for. What are you going to answer that? How are you going to answer that? I don't want to see the answer for that. I don't know how to answer that. With ours, guess what? Home inspector passed it, you get a new air conditioner. Right? They want to know what I'm trying to on that. There's a lot of pre existing conditions you buy on that. I would like to tell you, home inspectors catch everything. They do not. What about when it's too cold to right. test the AC? That's the thing. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to, we're going to pay for it. It's the plan we're going to eat. You turn that on in the spring, it's blowing out here, and there's leaks all over that hole in that coil. Guess what? Those holes are in there before winter came. All right? Well, better yet, the seller bring the air conditioner out about almost five pounds of free out there because it smells like I just said. It's going to last for at least three weeks, time for you to sell a house. You know, they move it for hot air. Guess what? That's pretty existing. All right? Every morning, come to work, going to turn that down to no fault of your own or the homeless factor or that buyer. All right? The buyer lets it hold it back. All right? One big, big difference between our, what we call, what we don't want to say, not detected, pre existing. You don't detect it, it's covered. Okay, so yeah, the winter, trust me, in the spring when they go turn those off, you always have any coils on replacing. You're a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I would like for, since you, you, you had this, been in that spot, and I used to hold on, and I saw that problem go away. No one reason why you like to be aware of it. But you can use anybody's. My job is to give you some examples of why you use us versus somebody else's. When we got the relationship, I'll tell you about more coal less than anybody. And he's already proven that. Our coverages are higher than anybody else's. And if you can throw out any more company you want out there, yeah, I mean, and I'll answer that question. And I'll, I'll bring a couple up because I know you threw a couple of these out of there. And right? then the back pages are like comparisons, which I need my glasses to read. I have actually talked to your inspection company that pushes RWS warranty. Heard you guys love that 18 month warranty? Uh, so, uh, 18 months is better for you. Well, also 36 one more team by three years. It's just three years and three years, right? Whether it's a month, four months, 18 months, 24 months, it doesn't matter. And it's going to make an 18 month warning. So why don't you just make it 24? Because they're less expensive than 24 than they are at 18. So I didn't understand 18 months, all right? They got good coverages, but I'll tell you some areas you're going to run a problem with, all right? Now, they might come and say, hey, guess what? We got $10,000. Let's put a little pick on us. We got a $10,000 limit on furnace and air conditioning. Hold on, yes, I don't have this Right? I want you to take the request in that condition. You don't take 10,000. You know, I will put a million up here. I don't even have 10,000 pounds either. Alright? Well, right. that's a dinosaur. You can't replace it. You can't treat it and replace it. Well, I mean, warranties are going to cover, warranty companies are going to cover the fail part. I mean, the problem part should cover is, is it a repair or a replacement? Alright? Warranty companies are repair. Replace when you can't repair. Okay? The biggest complaint I get is in South Carolina and Florida, for example. That law says if you change the outside unit or the inside unit, you know, if you change one of them, you have to do it all. If it's not on that zero 13, they will not let you work with an older system. You've got to replace the whole thing. Our warning company, hey, the, the outside unit is bad. We're going to pay the $1,900 for that outside unit. Guess what? I've got to change the handle on the inside, not the $3,500 bill. What do you need, warning company? Why aren't you replacing everything? No, we're going to replace the fail part. Right? Now the homeowner always has that option to take the amount we're paying and replace it all. You know, first thing I'll tell the homeowner, you got an 18 year old air conditioner, the outside unit is bad, we're going to fix and replace that. The outside unit, you know. Or why don't you take our $2,000 we're paying you, put another $1,200 in and do the inside unit all of us. It's their option. Because you are fixing the 18 year old air conditioner, and when you're done, it's still 18 years old on the inside. So I usually recommend you take that dollar amount to replace the system. Very, very common on appliances. And I'll tell you, when they call in for microwaves, when I tell my friends office now, I don't need a dispatch on a microwave. You know, unless it's a convention oven, a convention oven microwave combo, they're like 400. Unless it's that, don't need a dispatch. You give me 250 bucks and don't buy it. It's not even worth sending somebody out. It costs you more just to come out and fix that microwave. And nobody can even fix it anymore because microwaves are too cheap. That's why you don't have TV repair cheap anymore. You can go buy a new TV. Microwave is the same way, all right? Um, 
I don't know if you're going to write it about there, because I like to pick on competitors too, so you really come and pick on me. Yeah. Well, that's for Florida and South Carolina. They passed the law. You got to change the whole. You, you can't fix it right out here. You want to fix it? You put a new one in. You're doing away with the free on. You're going back R14 free on it, and, and the rest of the state will change it out. What the federal government's trying to do is get rid of all the free on. Don't get rid of all. Right? They don't want free on in air conditioning. When they break, they want to put a new unit. In. Some states have a harder standard. You will put a new unit. There's no free. That's so much. That's so much. We don't have to worry about here yet. You don't have to worry about it here. You, no, you don't have to worry. You probably won't change it in the end because as these things get repaired and fixed, you know, five years from now, you're going to see most of these. They're, you know, they stopped making them in, now three, four years ago. So at least if they break and they get replaced, we're going to we're going to die those out. You know, we got to watch service providers when they charge for free on. They're just raping some people over the coals, especially these guys. Um, I talked to the service providers. I've seen them try to charge $185 a pound. When you fix an air conditioner, it takes 12 pounds to fill that up. $185 a pound, $1,800, $2,000 just put the free on in it. You buy new air conditioner for the $25. All right? I give it a service buyer. That's what it is. Free on is more expensive. I said, yeah, Google it. I can, I can buy it for $18 a pound and 30, 30 pound tank. I'll just ship to your office for 18 bucks a pound. <laughs> so don't tell me you're paying 200 bucks for free on. When I know it's 18 bucks, I can Google it and have it there tomorrow. So they try, that's why we always say, customers, for your protection, call our funding office. And we'll get off the beaten path and we'll bounce around and come back to this. And why they say call us, we're the, about the only warning company to give that homeowner the option to use your provider or use our provider. All right? Homeowners love this, but it's our job to make sure they don't get taken advantage of. Right? Not that we have anybody taking We got a good, pretty good service network here for a way to get there a long time. Um, and when I say call, so we can check the prices. All right. And when they don't call, so I'll give you a couple of stories. Right? I had this is a new hand. Um, had a first fix of the condo. I got a warranty. Oh, no problem. You just pay me so you receive the warranty, no reimbursement. Okay, well, how much is my furnace? $8,900. It's an $1,800 furnace. We've got all that for the thing. Right? She didn't call us. Here's your receipt. I want my $9,000 back in the furnace. So, sorry, you got taken advantage of. For that protection. Right? And they had one yesterday, so I'm coming to the water, you're costing $1,600. They said, you're going to have to explain to me when I walk into Home Depot and there's a bunch of water here that says $500. You've got to tell me why you pay $1,500. I've got to justify that to the homeowner why they got to pay a $1,000 markup on it. Don't, we don't have a cost of every part. Right? We don't give them two, three, four hundred percent of markup. Now, when I tell my plane drop, when you get a furnace and air conditioning and water heaters and stuff like that, suggest to the homeowner, yes, you can use your own for free protection. Let us know what you're going to do. You guys are going to have to stay on the price. We know our guys are going to price. Right? I tell them for the small stuff, it's a dishwasher fix, or for the other fix, all small stuff. Use theirs, use ours. It's not a big difference in the price. But when you get to a, you know, an air conditioner at 2400 you can find those from 2400 to 6500 for the same air conditioner. Same exact difference, no difference. That's kind of very huge in the process. So we actually call us when we make sure the price is right and we're not getting to take advantage of us, or we are not. So they do have to call us, okay? When I have answer a call, so we're going to say, what's the problem? What's the diagnosis? We'll get your bill. Now, you're too high on this. If you want that kind of money for an air conditioner, go to the warehouse, pick it up, we've already got to pay for it. Like my for 1800 you want to charge 4000 for it? Go pick it up. Let's talk about your lady. That's why we want to call us. All right. So they can use their own provider, but we want to make sure they're giving fair prices to the homeowner who owns us. Now, to come back and pick on our little guest with that, I can take them all in and use it for the other one. Uh, things you're going to run into other oh, grains, cook time, look for the aggregates. Nice and green. See these coverings? It's green cover. Here's our leak. So we put a comparison up from the leak to their to their top thing they're about. $600 limit on others. You're going to have to complain, sir. You can't mind that one for $600. Our limit on ours is twenty-five hundred hours for the glasses. We have a wolf will go down, we have some zero, they're gonna need all that. Alright? Um they got a five thousand dollar limit on water heaters. That's great. 
You know, she buys a five thousand dollar bottle of water here. It's nine hundred dollars to a thousand dollars. That is water here. You can go to the water. That's what it is. We'll do it every day on these things. You don't need five thousand dollar bottle of water. Here. Sounds good. Why don't you just put a million on there? They put a million dollars for a water here. What they did with our water here is the number one reason why they failed. They the number one reason they replace the water here. Rust. People don't flood. The people do not bring their water here. I don't know how more they have to do it enough. I don't know years. <laughs> Every year during those water years, you get rough. the center of the bottom, bottom rust out, and the water here rust in the center. 99 percent of the time, that's why you're replacing the water here. So if you have a warning company that says, we do not cover sediment or rust, what are they doing on 99% of your water heaters? They're turning those down. All right? Our water heaters are covered after 30 days. What's the stipulation on that? You cannot move in the next day and say, my water heater's all rusted out, bring me a new one. All right? You've got to get by 30 days. All right? Another common question comes up on, on air conditioning furnace with rust walls. All right? We cover furnace and air conditioner for premature rust. This is more than 14 years old, newer. 14 years, newer than 14 years. If they rust out, that's premature rust. They should not rust out that way. You will replace that unit if they rust out from 13 years or newer. Let's take an example. You got a house, and that furnace and air conditioner that house is 33 years old. They should this warranty. Your furnace and air conditioner 33 years old. Let's face a couple facts. What do they need? They need a new furnace and air conditioner. Three years old, okay. So all the problems say, here's all more to never rebuild this. Now that agent just picked this one and needed for this and water you can go for it and build the whole house. And you get that home with the wrong expectation, but it's a whole house rebuilt for this right by the box. Right? What happens to a furnace and air condition when it gets that old? Right? We can read the part breaks. You know, the will cut the part breaks, we'll fix it. We'll go those up, we'll fix it. If we take those out, we'll fix it. Alright? But if that unit is a rust bucket, and they take that cover off and the heat exchanger just crumbles and just dust coming down. That outside coil, and they take that panel off and it's just dust. It's just all rust and dust. It's a rusted out system and shock. We're not going to replace that system for a rusted out shock system. Right? It's kind of like on a car. If the car rusts out, you don't need a new car because the door fell off and it rusted. Right? So my competitors might want to pick on that. Okay? Um, normally, what happens on those older systems. Okay, now how do I prevent myself from those older systems? Well, the first thing, if you have a home inspector come down and look at a person air conditioner that's 28 years old, what do you think he's right now at home inspection? I hope he's telling the first air conditioner shop is 28 years old. Yeah, there you're not getting very far on this. All right? Well they'll say like end of life. That's a common budget for budget for Budget for new is what they put on there. So if your inspection says end of line or budget for new, that's not covered. No, no house don't cover that. All right? Here's our protection. So get a license HVAC person to look at it. All right? Tell me, here's the truth and tell me what you're looking at. Is the thing rusted out? That's what I want to know. All right? Is that heater shade you're rusted out? Are those corals rusted out? It might be 20 years old, but I have another five years left in this. That's fine. Is it rusted out? That's what you want to know. Because that's what's going to turn it down on our end. If it's a rust bucket. I don't care how old it is. I don't want to warranty kept the warranty mold for 15 years. Warranty whatever age. To protect yourself is a rust bucket. Right? It was kind of, I saw this company here put some notes together on that subject. It's a uh, home warranty ink. And they came up that, hey, you know, we cover the first air fish for the summer they're listed. You guys familiar with that when we're using them? <coughs> what the problem is on that? You cover it, but you got to have a HVAC inspection on that, which is a great idea for a warning company because when a HVAC inspection company comes out with that furnace and air conditioner, first off, it's about 100 bucks for me to come look at it. Right? Second off, and I know this from I know this even from our supply of food care people. Now their number one job is really to sell them something. They just don't want the inspection. Now they come out and say, hey. The core weren't leaking, it's holding pressure, there's no rust on it, all your main systems are working. Guess what? There's not really a claim of that air conditioner furnace. Oh, the capacitor, it's 170 bucks. Maybe worst case, a bowl of water, it's only 350. There's no big claims on that. Sounds good, but, you know, what are you guys all nervous about when that home inspector comes looking at the house and you're making a deal? You ever score the deal? You make the negotiations a little tougher? You have that selling coming too. Um, 
back to on this. Rust and sediments are already hit on there. Uh, water softer they do cover. One of the few that they do cover. Only a five hundred dollar limit. They water softer is about forty five dollars. And again, they don't cover the rust with sediment. Um, they have a well pump like we do. Our well pump they make standard. I used to have well pump standard free, no extra charge. Take up to three hundred dollars. I thought that'd be great. You get three hundred dollars. Didn't have to pay any extra. People would like that. They hated it. Well pumps are twelve hundred dollars. All I got was complaints. Well, they don't pay three hundred. No well pumps twelve hundred. My mistake, I changed it. Well, it was an option. $85 option, and it opened up the wall pump. I'm buy you a new wall pump now. So you'd be more happy with that. So they have a $500 wall pump. I already know what you're going to run into. That wall pump's going to drop, and then you call me, I'm going to be paying you $900 for my wall pump. And I've explained it like I had explained it for years, and I decided to stop doing that. Um, they do have a non debt to pre existing condition, go to a $1,000 limit or a visual test and a mechanical test. You have to pass those tests, which nobody does those tests, so I don't even know what that means. So, but they do, we'll cover, they will cover that up to a thousand. Um, geothermal, 1,500, we'll go 2,500. Clearing the line stock, which is 275, that's not bad, because they said, well, 200 bucks will have to be spent on that. Right? What do you consider clearing the line stock? Uh, not tree roots. Can't be a cave in from the house to the street. Cable from the house to the street road over the clear that. If that doesn't clear it, don't bring the hydro jet. If it's a collapsed drain line, those trees are there, you gotta dig that out and put new lines in. Not gonna cover that. The collapsed lines and the trees will cover that. Right? But it's, if you need motor readers usually because the trees too though, right? Usually they're a little they got a cutter and, and I had this one of my houses, you know, they said, I ain't gonna pull up put all new lines in. You know, the house gets expensive. You got that cutter on there? Well, that cutter can tear up that PVC. They won't, don't like to do it. They said, ah, put that cutter on it. Send that line down. Let's see if it comes up with the PVC or not. Pull our roots out of there. They're full of roots. They can last me for three, four years until the roots go back again. Then it climbs my hand and they up anyways. But, you know, the rotor is going to tell you, you got three roots, it's fine. You got to dig it up. You know, they won't, they won't, they don't even like you sending the cutter down to those. Um, Okay, I'll, now you guys got to have some questions for me with that, for what you run into. Good, bad, or different. Coming out of the warning company of your life also. Yep. Well, tell us about the roof leak repairs, if that's new, because that was never... There's another company in town that covers like $300. Yeah, this is 500 Ours is 500 It's a coverage I do not like. It's a coverage I did not want to put in our plan. I did primarily from our Arizona market to the real big. Here's why I don't like it. Um, people get that roof option, they got a 28 year old shingle roof. That pretty, and I used to own a roofing company here in Fort Wayne, so I know all about roofing. I don't like it. Um, we call it roof leak. All right? I don't like what's called a roof, roof, roof repair. You got a 28 year old roof, and you can leave your roof up there to get that option. Don't give the homeowner wrong idea of getting a new roof. They're not. All right? You got 30 year shingle roofs, 28 year old, that's what they need. Warning company's not going to pay for that. What the warning company will pay is leaks. Right? The leaks are typically going to be found in the valleys. Do those come together? And the cement under there. Pull the shingles, shingles, and let down the car, we seal it. You're going to see some nail pops maybe in the leak. You're going to see around the chimney with a flashing. It's really a flashing A roof's not a mechanical item. Right? It just it's not going to break it's not a leak. It's normally 99% of the time it gets flashing. What the roof's like? Repairs. The ladder out flats and cements, that's some wire mesh and roll cement, they're all sealed up. You just see a little hole in the water in the roof oil. And that's what the roof repair does. All right? It fixes that roof. It is not going to give them a roof. Now, why I don't like that, I don't like homeowners getting the idea of them getting a new roof because I spent that $80 option or whatever to make a new roof. It doesn't work that way. All right? Not only is there something wrong with gold, is it $100 in service stock? $100 in gold, $75 on the platinum, $60 on the elite. What's your question about that up in the table? Or get it. RWS is $150. All right, you're not cool. Let me give you some statistics. Let me use your own statistics here. Your average. I just went through how many claims do you have 
of two hundred dollars a lap. Your average plane paid was four hundred fifty nine dollars. You know what percentage of that plane that knocks out from our $60 deductible to their $150? They got that $150, it's 25% of your claims. And that's pretty big. It's a lot of claims. A lot of claims your customers that, well, yeah, I got a warranty and it's $180. And we're going to pay for you to pay $150. I think it's the highest. It's probably the highest you see on the industry. 100 is kind of standard, 75 to 100, and put our lead at 60. We'll also do it if they have, you know, a couple of clients who will try to get the same service provider that takes my dishwasher out, my refrigerator, and my daughter's home. Let's get that one provider out there to go all once. Only one that for it. It's a called service home fee. And I know this is happening before, so try to explain to us what it says about, like, so I have this fancy stove, and there's a $300 part that's not working on it. But you can't get that part anywhere anymore. So I'm going to get $300 towards my 1200 or $1,600 scope. Or whatever that is. Absolute parts loss. Okay. Um, and we made some improvements on there. Uh, and I'll tell you what's referring to. When, when it's absolute part, don't make the part anymore. You're dealing with pretty little clients. All right. Um, the most common part on that is the modules, the control board. Um, we tend to not make those control boards after so many years. You don't have a control board, it's not working. Control board is about $400, 450 Here's your 450 you will buy a new oven. $1,800, only 450 It doesn't work. I have a warranty. I'm just going to work out of it. We want to pay for that thing part and then leave it. All right? We, used to, that is, we don't get near as many of those control boards, but we found a company in Texas now that rebuilds those for 300 bucks. All right? So, We'll set a service guy out, pop the control board, we set it down there, they rebuild it, they send it back, and they pop it in. Guess what? Your oven is going to be down for two to three weeks. Or you can take the 450, or you can get the 450 and go buy a new oven. You know, right now, they say, I'll just go buy a new oven, because I don't want to wait two weeks to the oven. Not, like, on a, on a board is 400 bucks, a third or 400 dollars, it's not a thousand dollar oven you can for that third or 400 dollars. All right? Warranty comes in that part time staying in business doing that. I could do it, but you would have to have a warranty that cost me another two thousand dollars, which you're not going to sell those. So what we try to do get the highest coverage possible, pay the most claims out on a price that is acceptable for real estate agents. You know who's the most price sensitive on home warranties? Not the homeowner. It is the most price sensitive. Yeah. It's the agents are very price, very price sensitive. I uh, always say, you know, you got to get what you pay for. And if you look at a plan at six ninety five, you look at the coverages, I'll put that, I'll put that every plan against anybody else in the country. But that's why you don't have much. And uh, they do it all day long. I got all those various pairs of warranty company out there. You know, you can always say, there's one warranty company does it this way, there's one does it that way, and I'm trying to pick out the one item. But if you ever want to see, I'm looking at this company or this company, I'll use it side by side. If they're on this third party, I'll pay them out. Company, it's free, but you have to have a whole uh, HVAC guy come out and look at it. Or do you have something for selling something? Yeah, that's kind of ridiculous. Uh, you get some other warning companies say, hey, we're free sellers. All right, rule number one, nothing free in this world. There is no free sellers. All right, what they do is took their buyer's program, and first seller's coverage is 15 bucks. All right, that 15 bucks, we'll call them free sellers. We break the two down. We part of the reason why we do this. All right, and this is why I do it. So, if you get if you get listing coverage for that seller's coverage, you have to give that buyer a warranty closing, right? When you order that through American Home Shield or Republic, they got three sellers coming out, just combine. Their idea is you order that listing coverage, you have to give that buyer, you just want that buyer's warranty. Here's a warranty for the buyers and the sellers to a closing. Like if you list, if you get listing coverage from us, we're going to give the price you sellers to replace your buyers to do a closing. You can bought buyer's warranty too. I believe that why don't you give, when you're talking to the lister, you know, 
you, I, by separating them, what I would say, listen, if you've got this price for your house, would you put it in the buyer for one day? No buyer can say that. Well, yeah, well, that's quite sure. But well, let's list your house for warranty. You can decide whether you're going to get them or not. You get list price, you get a warranty. You miss it. If you don't get list price, you can pay it away. Right? It's your choice if you want to get it to them or not. <coughs> Do you know if you put listing coverage on it? No. So they say it's combined. You just lock that buyer and buy that one in no matter what you got for the house. So we separate it. Okay, great. You're going to mark your house on that buyer's one. Now, do you want it covered then listing? Well, for 15 bucks more, without the furnace and air conditioner, or $75 including the air conditioner in the furnace, you can have your house covered during the listing. If you take it during the listing, you cannot back out of that buyer. You can walk the buyers. All right? So that's why we separate it. So that seller can make that choice whether he wants to be locked into that buyer or not. But what does that enable to do? You must every house to walk. I wouldn't put a listing out there without a warranty. Because you know, at list price, here's a warranty that comes with it. At list price. You don't get list. Well, guess what? You might not get the warranty, but they're not locked into it. That's why it's separated. Okay? So anybody else today get free seller's money. You know, but even you, yours, you can't get the seller without the buyer. Nobody. You, get, okay. you cannot get a seller without the buyer on any warranty okay. company. Okay. Seller, selling coverage is losing. 250 percent of all the insurance Okay, sellers is a loop. Can you provide a link coverage for buyer and buyer and seller? Sellers going to sellers going to always be the goal. Okay, but you can't pay for a week for the buyer. Yes. You can get listed coverage is already going to be gold, and the buyer can be gold, platinum, and leave whatever whatever they want to. Yeah. Yeah. So. And most of our agents have seen things we got a couple of new ones, but I had a seasoned agent ask me one time at a home inspection and. Uh, Inspector missed the windows, and the windows were awry, and he needed to be repaired with the home warranty. You know, could we use our goodwill and get these windows fixed? And Aaron and maybe I'm just dumb. She said, well, "This is mechanical coverage. This isn't for the structure of the home, so it's not even something that's covered under the warranty." Can you use your goodwill sometimes? Part of like the car breaking down, and I've got to use my goodwill for the car repair. But so I think sometimes people don't get that home warranty is for mechanical. We get all kind of calls from. Uh, hey, my front door. I used you as an agent. You didn't bring up the warranty. My neighbor used you as an agent. 
our end of the warranty, you got to get a air conditioner fix. My first one, I'll give you an offer to me. Your fault you didn't offer to me, I'm sure. And you, and, you, and you lose. The agents are losing. You don't know what we're That's why we really just like to have it fine. Right? Yeah, maybe it's in your way. Like you didn't offer to me. If the furnace is bad, well, you did offer the warranty. Well, well like when, they, when they buy the warranty, who takes the liability? We did the warranty companies. We take them. They, let's, listen, they're going to blame you all the time. Eight months later, that air, that for, that the dishwasher breaks. Why didn't you know my dishwasher was going to break eight months after they bought the house? They, they call you before they call in Lane's office. They want to pick up the agent and want you to fix this thing a year after they bought the house, and somehow you're supposed to be responsible to fix this garbage disposal a year later. Why don't you call the warning company? Oh, they weren't supposed to call. Yeah, a lot of times they call you before us. You know, the number one reason why brokers encourage agents to offer warranty is they don't just take care of the buyer or whatever it does. You know, you know, pretty much. Liability is on broker. You get your email insurance, one of the questions they have, you go off on warranties, home warranties, everybody. What percent of your home warranties do you sell? It's a direct effect to your email insurance. That's fact. The broker don't like that home warranty for the email insurance. And I don't care whether you sell or don't sell it, but it is nice to offer to everybody to make their own decision and to find it if they don't want to.
buy time and offer it. Right? They're not going to cover for your existing uh, right, Those so are all, those those are all, those are all elite plans. Those are all elite plans and all fixed them. So fix these things, you've got no question for the third district. Home warranties are, you know, in California, you have a 99% of home warranties. 99%. There's a whole lot of this for it. And it pays for it 99% of the time. So it pays for it with the agent. <laughs> it's standard operating procedures. They all So you asked for a statistic like we had uh, 1,400 deals so far this year, but we've only sold 100 of these local homes. So you assume we've got buyers and sellers. So we usually only do it on the buyer side, right? So the sellers. So you cut it in half at 700 deals out of that, we sold 100 of these homes. But we have to sell other homes. What was the reason why? I'm just out of my own curiosity. Why somebody else's? Why somebody else's? I think that some of the ones who sell other warranties aren't here right now. <laughs> or because they take them out to my other. And the inside? I'll tell you why. That sure. I did when I, I just less than two years into the business, mm -hmm. and there was somebody that approached me and came to me and took me out to coffee and sat down and explained their warranty, and nobody else did that. And so I used them. And so I used them. And so I think that's why I was, I was excited today. You know, it's one of our number one complaints we get from our clients. Doug, why don't you have a person come out of the office at least every other week? I might even come in with four or five states. They're spread out the wall right there. They don't come into the office. It's a number one complaint I have from our broker. I need some from my agents. All right? But since I pay my agent one third of that, I'm going to carry a large area. I take that money and put it in the bank. My belief is you'll we'll be happy if the customer will get them paid, which is going to be more important to you than if you get some help from donuts. I may be wrong on that. All right? People tell me all the time I'm wrong on that. The other warning companies go around relationships. The one that comes in and they're, they're banking the win agent by agent by agent. One at a time, one at a time, I'm here for you. We're here for you, even more so. We don't come around office. My number one complaint. And trust me, I thought about changing that. All right, getting more agents, making them closer, bring up the price. So if someone pay claims, and I got to pay my agents, and they're saying nine bucks more. I guess what the price got to be? Well, seventy-five more. Then I run into real estate agents who buy sensitive. What's this seventy-five bucks more? So what you can bring you some coffee. Right? <laughs> so much more. That's so right? true. That couldn't be more accurate. Yeah. I have to tell you though.
come through whatever. And we've got that good rule from the end resource line when we need it. Because every time, every once in a while, you get somebody that is just completely irrational. And they're going to be all over Facebook, and they're going to tell the world, and you know, we had agents on both sides. That's just my, my worst one, because we've had agents on both sides. And so there's, that's the other thing that we have with this.